A watchmaker's lathe could be the first tool that a watchmaker starts with. It's a tool that you can actually make your other tools with. It's something that you can make watch parts with. It's something you can make watch tools with. It's something you could make another watchmaking lathe with. There's a lot of watchmaking lathes out there, old vintage ones, and you can actually find them for a pretty low price. They just might need a little bit of TLC to get them going again. A lathe will take metal bar stock, any kind of round material, and spin it. And then we can carve away material we don't want. Then on top of that, there are all kinds of attachments that you can add to a simple lathe. And those attachments could allow you to thread on screws, to file flats on the outside of a part, like a winding stem. There are attachments like milling attachments so that you can actually cut on the top or side of a part and mill into it while the part is stationary. So with a milling attachment, you actually have a very small mill and a lathe in one. A nicely outfitted lathe that is a precision instrument could be quite expensive. But if you're willing to spend a little bit of time finding the parts and pieces and putting them together yourself, you could actually assemble a nice little lathe that could make all sorts of parts with a relatively low price tag. It just takes time, but a watchmaker has a lot of time. This is my lathe, and it is a Levin lathe. The brand doesn't really matter that much, but there are some brands that were well known for making a quality product. But that doesn't mean that just because you buy something that has a certain brand name, since it is old, if it was equipment that was abused, doesn't matter what brand name it is, it's not gonna be as nice as a lesser known brand that was taken care of or potentially even improved upon by the watchmaker that used it. On a lathe, you've got the bed, which on this particular lathe is right here. Now, the first thing that you have to have on the bed is the headstock. This is your headstock right here, and the headstock will have a pulley on it that will spin. You'll have a draw bar, which is what draws a collet into the headstock when you tighten it down. The collet is what will hold your material. So for this lathe, we have one of these collets, and this is an eight millimeter collet. It's eight millimeters on this diameter, so it fits in this headstock. And we align it, and then we can actually tighten the draw bar. And if we have the right size material in there, which this is a 5.8 millimeter collet, so we can put material that is 5.8 or slightly smaller just a little bit smaller in that collet and tighten down around that material. Now the pulley on one of these lathes has a few different sizes. You can change the pulley to a smaller diameter or a larger diameter in order to change the speed or the RPMs of the headstock. And the pulley is powered by a motor. The motor has a pulley which then attaches to another pulley. And this is a nice setup because we actually spin a drive shaft with that motor instead of just going directly to the lathe. This drive shaft allows me to add some additional attachments to this lathe that also require power from the motor. Over here, I can add my belt. And this is a belt tensioner that I can adjust. And when I add that belt, I can add my milling head. So this mill here is driven by belt and we can add it right onto the bed and mill onto the part that is in the headstock. And this can rotate and move up and down. The cross slide goes onto the bed. slide will allow us to move whatever we put on the cross slide 
away from the headstock and towards the headstock, and then across the headstock. We could have just a cutting tool cutting on the outside of the bar, or we remove the tool holder and we place the milling attachment on the cross slide. And then we can mill forward, backward, out and in, and we can go up and down and also angle the head of the milling tool. And the milling tool is spinning, so you can use an end mill, you can use a drill, any kind of cutting tool that needs to spin. So then you have a combined mill and lathe, and you can do all of this when you put a piece of material in the lathe and leave it there. You can cut the outer diameter, and then leave the material in the lathe, take the cutting tool off, place the mill on there, and then mill on that part without having to remove the part and put it back into the lathe. All of that is important because when you ever take a part out of a lathe and then put it back into a lathe, it won't always go back in exactly as it was the first time. So we try not to do that because then we can end up with some issues on the concentricity of the things we are cutting. If you want to use a lathe, but you don't have a cross slide, the thing you're gonna lose is the measurement. You can do the same cutting manually or freehand without the cross slide, but it takes a lot of skill and constant measurement. So oftentimes it's nice to start with a very basic lathe because these cross slides can be very expensive. If you have a basic lathe with a bed and a headstock, you can get one of these supports and it will go on the lathe bed as well. And this support allows you to, when aligned properly and tightened with your material coming out of the collet, you can use a cutting tool and you can actually place the cutting tool on the support. And then you can move it back and forth and this guide helps you stay at the right height, but you're the one who is choosing exactly how far you cut into the part and exactly how far over. And every time you take a cut, you'll measure. And you have to be very precise to keep everything parallel so that you don't have waviness in the bar. So it takes a lot of skill, but it's something that needs to be mastered. So there's also a lot of different collets, right? You could start with just one collet like this one, a 5.8, and always just cut material that is 5.8 or slightly smaller. You may have to remove a lot of material to make something that's three millimeters, but it's doable. Collets can be kind of expensive. This here is a special collet. It's called a Jacob's Chuck, and this actually allows us to put drill bits or mills or any kind of tool that has a round shank into our tailstock. So this shape allows us to attach a part to our headstock or tailstock, if you have the same size headstock and tailstock. I have a decent little set of collets here, so these are all different sizes, so I can change the bar stock that I use. There are also some of these collets which are stepped, which will allow you to hold a thin, flat part. Same backside and profile, and same diameter to fit this lathe, but a very different front. You can even make collets on your own if you have a lathe that is big enough to cut that collet. If you want to mill a flat on the top of a bar and you have the milling attachment on, you'll need to lock the headstock. And if you want to rotate it 180 degrees to get a flat on the other side of that bar, you can do that because there are holes on the back of the tailstock pulley so that you can rotate it a certain number of holes and your bar will rotate too and then lock it in place. And that's the first step to cutting gears.
cutting the tooth profile of wheels or pinions. Then you start to get into some math and it helps to have an indexable headstock where you can actually rotate the headstock. You can lock the headstock in certain positions so that you are easily able to lock the headstock to cut, say, 80 teeth on a wheel, and they'll all be spaced properly. I have a stack of these attachments, and they all have a different number and spacing of notches in the profile. We can attach this part to the end of our bed, and we place in between our headstock and our drawbar one of these with the right number of notches. And this will drop into the notches, and we can simply rotate our headstock manually to the next notch to cut another tooth. So some setup like this is really important if you want to cut teeth for wheels and pinions. So really the only thing that is essential if you want to start out on a lathe is to have your headstock and a bed that matches the headstock, some belting, a motor, and then you need a tool post to support a tool and at least one collet and a cutting tool. And then you just need a lot of time to practice.